This is Andy Peroff, Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm glad to be joined by Showtime, Sonny Edwards. Sonny, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all good, thanks. I'm doing all good. It's good to hear. Obviously, you're down here in Birmingham. You're from my, you're in my area now, I should say, uh, in having your open workout ahead of your bout with Marcel Braithwaite for the British Super Flyweight title. Talk to me about how happy you finally are to get the chance to fight for a title. I know you've been keen to do. Yeah, I mean... Even though they mean a lot to me, you know, all the sort of the IBF, WBOs. Some people regard them, some people don't. Um, but, you know, the British title is one of the staple titles in British boxing. It is what a lot of kids look up to wanting. I know I did. Um, and I've made it no secret I've been trying to get the British title for ages now, man. And what seems like ages. I've been mandatory for like a year. You know, Tommy Frank pulled out of the, the purse bids and whatnot. But, um, yeah, buzzing to be honest, that a British opponent, you know. Um, for some reason, when I booked Farag, it couldn't get made for it. I don't really know the ins and outs, but I think he got knocked back. Um, and yeah, here we are with, with, with Marcel. Obviously, last time out you fought a floor away, it seemed to be that you would possibly stick around there, but you had the ability to be able to move between floor and super floor. Why move back up to super floor for British title? Was that the only way that you could get your chance to fight for the title? Um, well, because I was mandatory at Superfly, I didn't really want to give that up. Um, and I was even when Thingy, uh, Tommy Frank, sort of turned the fight down, I was still mandatory. So when I went down to Flyweight, I got my world rankings at, at Flyweight. But that's because we'd given up on Superfly and we'd been, we were pushing on for world titles now at Fly. That's, that was the plan. And obviously this opportunity come, and it's a no-brainer at this stage of my career. Do you know what I mean? Um, I can bat some between you for the weights. Obviously, Superfly's a bit more comfortable. Superfly's very comfortable, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I enjoy making Superfly a little bit more. You know, on, on that, I don't struggle to make Flyweight, but obviously that last kilo and a half, it gets you sometimes. But just what I wanted, the British title. I didn't really care about the weight, but I was mandatory at Superfly because of the work I'd done at Superfly. Um, and yeah, and now, obviously, my stable mate, Carl Yousaf, is fighting my ex-opponent, Ross Murray, for the vacant British flyweight. So, in a few months, we could potentially have Lee McGregor won the bantamweight, I win the super flyweight, and Carl win the flyweight, and then we've got the three bottom weights of the British titles. I don't think that's happened all too many times, you know, one, one stable having three British titles at the same time. Let's just talk about Marcel, your opponent. What should we expect from him? What do you expect from him on fight night? I think he'll be game. I think he'll be trying to be tricky and moving a bit, but no, I mean, I'm not going to go chasing after him. I'm patient. We've got 12 rounds to enjoy each other's company. So I feel like he'll try something, do something different. Um, or maybe he's got in his head that he's so much physically stronger than me because I hear him saying, oh, he was always a couple of weights above me in the amateurs. Um, so maybe he'll just try to stick it on me. But... I feel like we've seen how all the Mexicans got dealt with and Ryan Farag doing that same approach. So I don't, I don't care to be honest. I'll worry about what I'm doing and, and everything I'll be doing is to sort of counteract what he's doing. You know what I mean? So I'll negate him, I, I, I think. And, and I'll show that there's a clear level in class between us. You mentioned earlier in the interview that you was originally moving towards World Honours before this opportunity presented itself provided everything goes to plan on December 21st and you are successful and you pick up that British title, do you think you'd have difficulties in trying to maybe win it outright or would you look to move straight back down to, towards that world level, sorry, not back down, but back down to flow weight to move towards uh, world level again? I want to win the title outright. I want it forever. Do you know what I mean? If I go skin, I can sell it for 10 grand or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I want that title. Do you know what I mean? I, I do want that title. Being able to give that to my son or something would be... I wouldn't want to think about it, do you know what I mean? Um, but it's been hard enough getting an opponent for a vacant title, so who knows? But I know Marcel's getting paid very well for this. Um, and not because he's Marcel, but because he's fighting me. And that's a good stage now that my opponents are getting paid well, which means I should be able to get more of them, do you know what I mean? And, and there's only so many opportunities to be able to fight on a platform like BT. You only have one being Sky. You only have two fighters at my weight being Charlie and, and Cal Yafai, former world champion, current world champion. So I'm the sort of... The, that little gatekeeper, I suppose. If, if anyone wants to fight, they've got to fight and they've got to see me. And it's going to be a small window of opportunity for all these British fighters when I'm trying to defend this British title rapid. Um, within the next, say if I win it, I want to defend it three times within nine months. Like, every three months, like I've been boxing. Boom, boom, boom. A couple weeks out, ten-week camp. A couple weeks out, ten-week camp. So, um, the fight will get offered to a lot of people, whether they take it or not, is, is up to them. But then if I'm getting stalled, then... 
I'm not gonna, you know, beat myself up over it. Like, cause I've got a long career, touch wood, hopefully ahead of me. So, I reckon I'll get it out right at some point. But um, if I can do it after winning it this year, then and and, and winning it outright next year, then so be it. If not, then I'll do what the what paths open up. Just to get a word in on your brother as well. Obviously, he's, he's dis- decided to vacate his title because of his struggles to drop back down to floor weight when making weight. Since the bout with Julio Cesar Martinez, he came out back, he tested positive for clenbuterol. He was above the threshold, uh, only a little bit. And then the WBC changed the threshold limit to be above the tested amount for Julio Cesar Martinez. What did you make of that entire situation when it came out? It's, it's a hard one because obviously the only reason ha- what happened what happened is because he was on drugs. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, so Charlie would have knocked him out in the second round if he went on drugs. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I'm joking. But um, you know, I don't know the truth. I, I just know that you've never found clenbuterol or winstrol or any other performance enhancing drugs in my body or, or all drugs that I've done because I've never taken them. Um, and just because there's a little trace in a time of testing doesn't mean that there's been hasn't been a lot more at some stage and, and that's all I believe um, and it's a bit mad so if I have a little bit of clenbuterol is that alright because I, don't, you know what I mean it's a load of bollocks for me personally and, and I've always held quite a strong stance on, on, on drugs cheats because something I'd never want to do I don't want any advantage that's, that's not fair like going on a level playing field hopefully who trains the hardest and, and then who's better wins but I don't know I think that whole Oh, yeah, contaminating meat. But I, I don't know if this is, like, just a fantasy story, but I thought Renoso's family was, like, butchers or something like that. And, and oh, that, that's, that's what I've heard. I don't know how true that is. Um, so I to do with that. And obviously he's in the same camp, so I don't know. But it, it's a bit bizarre, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel like they'd have to eat a ton of whatever meat it is that, to get any amount in their system because... Once they're all killed and chopped down, do you know what I mean? It seems a bit bizarre to me, but like I don't, I don't know the science behind it. Um, but we move, do you know what I mean? We move, and, and Charlie's moved on from that now. Um, and he's on his new venture now, of um, at his new weight, whatever weight that is. I don't even know, to be honest. He's been saying that to people, but he just throws curveballs in. He just throws curveballs all the time. He'll be saying he's back at flyweight next. <laughs> um, I feel like he... Look at the size of the kid. Like... He's in good shape now and he's huge, man. Like, I'm sparring him next week. I'm not really looking forward to that because he looks <laughs> massive. Um, I'm usually heavier than he is. Um, but yeah, I think bantamweight's probably better for him, you know. He was 52 kilos for years as an amateur. And, 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 and he's big and he's always in good shape. Um, and that last fight was just, for me, one too many times making flyweight. And, and, he, and he was kind of dead on the scales. But like I said, we move and, and, and we learn and... I mean, he's happy in life. He's in a good place. He kept his world title, obviously, then vacated it, but he never lost it in the ring, I suppose. You can always say that. Um, and it's just, a, it's just another page or chapter in, in, in his life. You know what I mean, there's been so many ups and downs in boxing, out of boxing. So this is what it is, man. You've got to enjoy the journey, eh? Whether, with the good and bad, you know what I mean? And just a quick, quick couple of thoughts I'm just trying to get your thoughts on. Obviously, this past weekend, we saw Wilder stop Luis Ortiz with a seventh round stoppage victory. Did you catch a vote? If so, what was your thoughts on it? Do you know what? I've been kind of like... I haven't really been watching all too much boxing, which is strange for me because I do watch a hell of a lot of boxing. I think the last fight I proper watched was KSI. No <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I've seen the knockout and he's got some, he's got, he's got some power in those hands, isn't he? And I remember I was watching the first Ortiz Wilder fight, me, Levi Quinciona, and, and um, Sean Porter's dad, because they was over they were in the casino. There was over Kenny was over for who's the kid that Dave Allen boxed, that um, Jamaican. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. So I was watching it there, and um, we had a like, like a two-hour chat with him, man. It was, that was lethal, some experience that man. And um, but yeah, Ortiz was doing really well there, nearly stopped him. And so I knew it was going to be a hard fight, and then. Wilder was pretty much lost every round to the best of my knowledge and then done him with a big shot. Um, but yeah, like, I've not watched all too much and if you're going to ask me about Ryder Smith, I've only watched three rounds and need to sit down and watch that because a lot of people are slating the decision, but uh, I don't know. I don't know about that one either.
Well, the final thing I was going to move on to is next weekend, the, another big heavyweight clash, Ruiz Joshua 2 in Saudi Arabia. Sonny, your thoughts on it? Break down the thought for me. How do you see it going? It's a hard one, man, because my heart, like, AJ has is, is, is been good to me. I've, now I've trained with him and, and I've been around him um, and he's such a nice bloke. And obviously I want him to win. Um, you'd be stupid to be like, oh, AJ's 100% going to win after what happened last time. But if they've made the right adjustments, then I believe he is still a better fighter than Ruiz. Um, I think he just caught him a bit off guard, maybe let it slip a little bit, you know. Um, but remember, he, he had Ruiz hurt just before he got hurt. It's just in heavyweight boxing, that's, that's what it is, you know what I mean? You don't always have to be technically better. Get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, and then, Jesus, the rest of the fight, that's it. Um, I think AJ definitely can do it. I just want to see in the first round how much the little adjustments are made. Um, and, and, and I'm hoping and, and praying that he does does do it. But then again, Ruiz, he's a nice bloke as well, do you know what I mean? So, I don't know him. Um, but it's one of the ones that I can't really give too much of an insight on because I know my heart's saying one thing, but then my head's saying, well, there's reasons why he got beat the first time. And I think that's just sport in general. But he's got a great team around him. Scientific and technical, like... He's got like the best surroundings that any British boxer probably has ever had, you know, the team he's got and uh, the support and nutritionist, the strength and conditioning. So he's got as good a chance as any. And I don't like these people saying, oh, if he loses, that's it, he should retire, he's over. Because he'll still make a hell of a lot of money being Andy Joshua and fighting, do you know what I mean? And, and he's still got a lot to give. People lose sometimes, do you know what I mean? It's, it's not the end of the world. Well, Sonny Edwards, we will leave it there because I know we've got other people waiting to speak to you, so I appreciate your time now. Hope you have a safe journey back up north to Sheffield. Appreciate your time, like I say. Thanks for speaking to myself and Boxing Social. No, no, thank you, man. Awesome. Cheers, Sonny. Catch you soon.